Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 11.2.5.7, Backing Up Configuration Files. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS Introduction to Networks Version 6 curriculum. Now, in this particular lab assignment, we are going to see how do we store our um, router configurations off-site. So it's great that we do copy run start. That is an important everyday um, step that we want to do when we're configuring a router because every so often if there were like a power outage you know we wanted to be able to restore those changes because everything that we do is lost if we don't do copy run start. We've been saving it locally to the router. Now that's great just like we save a lot of things. We save our files and folders probably to the desktop or documents or downloads folder or somewhere locally to our computer, right? That is great because when if a power outage were to happen and our computer comes back up, that stuff is persistent and stored on our local hard drive. However, what happens if there's like a fire or some natural disaster or catastrophic failure um, as far as physical stuff is concerned, um, the physical integrity of the device is compromised, then we no longer have those backups. So we might want to save them off site to like a TFTP server um, or somewhere else, okay? Or even back them up to an external hard drive, whatever it is, a flash drive. Many routers today, most of our up to date stuff has USB drives, right? Um, and there's, there's a reason for that. Or how do we go the other direction? What if we want to download new iOS to our router, right? We have to download that from somewhere and load it. Um, into the right place for it to take take effect. So let's look at those differences in this lab and how to do that. Um, it says use a terminal on PCA to access the RTA command line. Okay, so they already got our cable. Terminal, okay. All right, so enable, and it wants us to configure and activate the interface G00, okay? So I'm going to go into configuration mode, go into interface G00, and to activate it, we basically do no shutdown or no shut, right? And you see it changes state to up. Um, it says the IP address should match the default gateway for the TFTP server, okay? Now the TFTP server over here says our default gateway is 172.16.1.1. That would be the interface that would be located here for it to get outside of uh, RTA, that's his default gateway. So that is probably G00 as well. So in that, those regards, we want to make sure that it's set. So I'm going to do a do show run here to see no IP address has been set, right? So we need to do IP add, and that was 172.16.1.1. Okay, and the subnet mask is probably. Well, it is because it's a part of this network. 255.255.255.0. So again, just to run down that really quickly, we know the default gateway for this is this IP address right here. This is the one we're configuring, interface G00. Okay, even though we're console from here, this is the interface we're configuring. We turned it on with no shut. Now we need to set the IP address, and it needs to be in the same subnet, okay, as our TFTP server. Okay. Now it says to connect our uh, test connectivity to the TFTP server. Sorry about that. Uh, to test connectivity to the TFTP server, troubleshoot if necessary. So if we go over here, or we can do it from here too. We can do a ping from our router. We do ping, and you ping the address of 172.16.1.2. Right. We'll wait. Most of the time we're pinging from the other way, right? So the success rate is 80%. Try it again, it should be 100%. Most of the time we go from like the end device to the router. Sometimes we can go from the router to the end device as well, okay? So that means that they're talking, okay? TFTP server and RTA. They're talking, so that's a good thing, okay? Next, it says on our router, we're going to do copy TFTP running config. Copy. TFTP and notice we're doing these commands from where we do our show run and everything from privilege exec mode so copy TFTP running config or you could do copy TFTP run that would also work 
All right, we're going to set the destination address or name of my remote host, which is that TFTP server over there. Okay, what is my source file name? We'll just name it RTA configs. Uh, they do C O N F G. Okay, destination file name, we'll keep it that. Hit enter, and it was transferred. Okay, so what happened here is we copied our configurations um, from the TFTP server to the actual router, okay? Even though I know we're originating this from the router, okay? So what we did was copy from the TFTP server to our running configurations, okay? Where are we grabbing it from? The IP address of that remote server. What is the file name on that remote server or that, R, that TFTP server? RTA-CONFG. What do we want our current one to be named when we copy it over to the, the router? We can just name it running config. That's the default, so we just left that and pressed enter. Okay, so basically it did that for us. All right, um, so it found it. It was 785 bytes. It transferred it in 0 .011 seconds. Okay, so it says issue the appropriate show command to display the interface status. So let's do, oh, sorry, just show run from here. Okay. And what you notice is G00 is up, okay? So we kind of replaced our running configurations, everything that was going on on our router, all right? So what we need to do is we need to fix, like right here, this one says shut down. So interface G01, go to configuration mode. Okay, we need to type in no shut to be able to fix that and change that, that to up, all right? Now, we're going to back up our configurations, all right, and the iOS, the, the operating system, to the TFTP server. So first, they have us change the host name of RTA to RTA-1, okay, and we're going to save our configurations to the, you know, locally. That's what it means on NVRAM, okay, so we're going to save it locally momentarily then we're going to do a copy our running configuration so you could do run here or running config as the directions tell us and then tftp so this time we're going the other way we're going from the router to the server so we're oh sorry let me exit back out one okay so before we went from the tftp server to our router or our running config. This time we're going from our router or our running config to our TFTP server. The address again of the remote host is that TFTP server. My destination file name, we're just going to leave it <coughs> RTA-1-CONFG. That's what's going to copy it over there for, all right, and be named. So it did it. Now we're going to copy our flash to the TFTP server. So our flash is our uh, operating system here. And we're going to copy that over to the TFTP server. Now the source file name here, I'm going to copy and paste this so I don't have any typos from the directions. And the address of the remote host is 172.16.1.2. My destination file name, just going to leave it the same. Hit enter and it starts to copy it over, okay? Now again, this command structure is copy, what do you want to copy, okay? Like the, the source, okay? And then where is it going? So this one, the first one we did was copy from the source TFTP server to our local running configurations on the router copy from our running configurations local on our router to the remote TFTP server. Copy from our local flash to the destination of the remote TFTP server, okay? Now they want us to go to 
uh, TFTP and click on services and under TFTP services we should you see our configuration file there right this is the stuff that we transferred over there okay so you should see that that's what we named it after we renamed the router RTA-1 if we would have left it RTA it would have overwrote our other file that's the one we copied from the TFTP server to the router okay so you can go down here too and you'll see our C1900 universal K9 dash mz dot spa dot 151 dash 4 dot m4 dot bn Whew, that was a long file name all right so we see that that is actually working because we have tftp as a protocol enabled on the server okay and we see we get 100 out of 100 so you can see the differences in backing up one direction and the other and the advantages of being able to store something off site and being able to remotely download it at the drop of a hat so again you can kind of see the command structure there. Don't forget that uh, as we're going forward.